especially exciting this year, I think, to have an extended autumn, extended fall. Um, the, the fall arrangement that I'm um, featuring here is already done, is a door entrance. I have a lot of copper in my garden, and use uh, copper as my garden accessory. And so this is in, in my back door, uh, which is almost like my front door. If anybody's been to my house, my back door is in the courtyard. So um, it's kind of a feature. I've had wonderful, wonderful um, pumpkins and gourds, but we all know those are going to hit the dust probably by this weekend. So if you want a fresh looking arrangement for your Thanksgiving holidays, you might want to think about how can I extend my arrangement um, and take out the pumpkins and take out the gourds because they're going to end up being soft and mushy and making stains on your deck or your sidewalk at this point. So what I've done here um, and what I'm going to show you first is just a whole bunch of plant materials that are easy to harvest out of your garden or out of nature. And some of you may know that I also have the pleasure of being Ranger Randy out at Swell. So I've come across fungus and you know lovely little things that you can gather out in nature as well. This year I have two grandsons that are two years old. And we went on leaf collecting excursions. Um, and these are very simple to keep nice. Look at the colors this year. And you know, they were a little bit more brilliant outside, but if you put them in, I have a huge dictionary. I use this dictionary more for pressing flowers and leaves than I do for looking up words. But it's one of those really big, thick, heavy ones. And the paper seems to be just the right um, heaviness, that if you put these right in amongst the paper, they don't get moldy, they don't do any of those things. Um, they just get a nice, crisp, finish. And um, when you get to walking around, oh, by the way, I want you to know you're, you're able to walk around the tables. If you have to go earlier than I get done, please go and look at the um, different seasonal centerpieces up close. Um, but we have put together a little autumn, um, like a terrarium here. So now when the grandsons come for Thanksgiving, they can talk to Grandma, Nani, <laughs> about gathering these leaves and gathering the bittersweet and gathering the other materials from the garden that we now have in the little showcase. And it will even be a centerpiece of the um, Thanksgiving table. So I'm trying to create an enjoyment of the outdoors for the children, but also um, traditions. Traditions are very important in the garden and uh, nature are a great place to um, share traditions. I'm on the Hort Advisory Committee here and our mission is research, education, and inspiration. And today it might be backwards. You might have inspiration. You're gonna have a little education. And definitely I have researched everything that I'm doing here today. <laughs> this is decades of trial and error um, of what works. So the leaf thing works if you do that. If you put it between scrapbook pages that are plastic, it doesn't work because they get moldy. So those are just some of the things to think of. These are all materials I gathered right out of my garden. And then I highlighted them with a metallic nickel spray. These are the seed heads of uh, wind anemone, Japanese windflower. Um, this is just my silver artesmia. This is the allium, and they have that nice little oniony smell, but look at how beautiful they are, metallic. This was in a container, a eucalyptus that I had in a container started out as a little two-inch plant, and um, when autumn hit, I took the things that weren't blooming very well out of it and just made it a specimen, and that lasted for six weeks, and now I cut it off the other day and sprayed it with the nickel spray. So. I will be able to use this in my front entrance um, arrangement. But see how easy uh, those things are to gather. Now anytime you gather a material like that from the garden, the best way to deal with it is to take it into a drier, um, not a cool damp place, just a drier, <coughs> a little bit of heat. I have a garden shed, so that's where I put it. And you hang them upside down. And that way they will hold their shape 
as they start to dry and they won't be all crumpled and all um, lying all over. And of course, you know, make sure you gather some pine cones. Linda helped me gather some pine cones from her tree the other day. Because these are very useful in tucking into arrangements, um, you know, window boxes outside, if you have any of those kinds of things. They're lovely. Now, one caution about bringing things indoors, even your fresh green materials, and this is research based. I had a total infestation a few years back of uh, spider mites on my ivy topiaries because I didn't even think about it. I treat those before I bring them in, fumigate them and put them in a bag and bring them in. And then Christmas came and I gathered all these lovely greens and I brought them in. And when Christmas was over and I threw everything away, I had a great infestation of spider mites all over my indoor plants. So because I use them on um, tables where we're going to eat, not just off and away. I typically will pick greens like the arborvita or the pine because you can take these into your sink. I literally take these into my sink. I just swish them around in some warm sudsy water and then I rinse them off with cold hard water so I'm not leaving them in soft salty water and then just put them on, on my sink and let them drain. And that way you're not spraying them with an insecticide and putting them on your heating table. So um, that's just a caution. Real trees can do that too. You know, if you don't have an artificial tree, but you cut a tree, you bring it in, and if you have garden products inside, um, you could have an infestation. Everybody <laughs> still hear me okay? Um, your gatherings or your arrangements in your house can be just as simple as this. Just a copper lid from a pan that I don't have. I bought the copper lid in Norway. I just like the lid. I didn't know I was going to do with it, and it was sitting on the table. And I thought, oh, I'll just put some of these very unique uh, individual items from nature into that copper lid. You can have it on your coffee table. You could have it on your buffet. Or, as I'm going to do with this one, you can use it as a part of your centerpiece. I've done some very elaborate centerpieces over here with the wheat wreath and the um, terrarium that has the collection in it. And then I've done very simple ones because some people like to have things cleaner and more simple. Um, this is an example of something you could do. I had these gourds outside in a basket and I just cut, cut out a hole, had a little tiny glass that I put inside and my mums were still blooming outside yesterday um, so I just made little mini arrangements. Now what's nice about this in a dining or eating table is you have to also remember as wonderful as those high and elaborate decorations are that you see when you go to pottery barn or the nurseries or any of those things, they belong on a buffet table. So if you're going to have a buffet serving table that's great to do all of that stuff there. I have an example set up behind here. That's a buffet arrangement. If I put that in the middle of my table and then try to have conversation with anyone over dinner, they'd be fighting the trees, you know. So you have to keep that in mind. This, therefore, is a very simple, um, cute way to incorporate some things you've already been using. You don't have to go out and spend any money. It's just all stuff that I still had um, sitting around the house. And, and a caution on this, if you are not using a padded tablecloth, which most of us don't do anymore, I don't anyway, uh, put something underneath this. Because this is a natural organic material. It has humidity in it. This is what I use my <coughs> covers for candles that are no longer around. I, I don't save all of them because <laughs> I have a fetish for candles. But I do. I have four or five on hand that I can just use underneath a candle so that I know that I'm not having the heat of the candle directly onto even even a linen. I don't. I'm very safety conscious of that. Or put it under here, and they come in bronze and they come in the nickel and they come in lots of cool colors. So you're protecting your woodwork uh, by doing that because this is an organic.
The only other thing <coughs> I've used here is a simple candle and a sprinkling of some of the autumn leaves that, that we collected and, and pressed. Now, if you don't like to use real candles, they do have these wonderful battery-operated ones now. And really, with the little flames that wiggle, um, they're pretty effective. You know, it lasts about five hours if you leave it going, which is about what a candle would last if you left it going. And then you can't walk out of the room if your candles are, are going. It's, it's all about safety. I use a lot of candles, but then we sit around the table and watch them burn down until they make a puddle. Well, no. So that might be a really good idea for people if they're worried about the safety issue. The only thing you don't get out of these, which I really like, and it's a part of the sensory experience, I think, of decorating for the holidays, is the fragrance. So many of the burning candles actually have a, a wonderful fragrance. We started some up at the end here, and I hope it's starting to smell a little bit holiday-ish. There's gingerbread, there's pumpkin pie, there's um, spruce. And you will get that fragrance in your um, home by, by using the fragrant candles. Another thing that I like is when the guys go pheasant hunting, they will give me their pheasant feathers. Because these make um, also wonderful um, decorations. Um, if, let's just say I'm going to add some of these to this arrangement. And just watch this pop. everything together, doesn't it? And again, you all know, I don't know what it is about odd numbers, but if you don't have them, you miss them. If the eye misses it. And if you do any arranging at all, it, you know, my, my son, Robert, is a very symmetrical person. He likes everything in twos. And so if he buys one candlestick, he buys two candlesticks. So if he buys, and he likes to have that symmetry. And that doesn't bother me because I'm so used to doing arrangements and things like that, but of the odd numbers, and you know, if you don't have it, um, in fact, I intentionally left something out that wasn't an odd number just to see if it bothered you. And you, you said, well, you don't have an odd number there. It doesn't look right. That's okay if you say that. Mm -hmm. But um, these kinds of things can really make your arrangements pop. And don't forget to look for seed heads that are really interesting in your shrubbery. And this happened, I had not done this one before. This happened because I was looking for this television show, Prairie Yard Garden. And um, I was doing a big arrangement for the entrance. Look at this beautiful seed head. It's off of the nine bark, nine bark shrub, golden nine bark. And um, you can just leave a natural like this. These are the, the kind of thing that I think are great if you have side lamps, lamp, lamps by your door to tuck these around your side lamp, something like this that adds a little bit of decor on that and uh, makes it kind of pop. I always do that at Christmas too. I use these drapier <coughs> evergreens for that. Or I'll just tuck this around the light, tie a bow on it, and it just makes it pop a little bit. These are, anybody recognize what these are? Yeah, the fern frond. I used to have a copper spray paint that was really bright copper. Couldn't find it this year. Um, so this is an aged copper. Um, but, you know, they're also a very interesting um, natural Thing right out of your garden that you can use to accent and you know they're they're great even as a table you know put that around with a few greens or something um, or bittersweet trailing over it they don't take up a lot of room but they add that little nature's accent I'm going to show you how to make a bow you guys all know how to make bows <laughs> You don't have to go buy a bowl. Um, I found some copper ribbon. And I had some already at home, but I really like this one. Now I need to get my scissors. 
scissors and my wire. Now again, these wire edges on the ribbon really do help. Jessica, maybe take that urn off the table right now. Yeah. This is going to go with my copper entrance planter in the back end. I have a star that's a garden accessory. that I just attached to a wreath. Okay, I cheat. I start with a fake wreath. I don't hand wire, hand wire, hand wire, all of that green wreath. And I will show you my Christmas wreath here. I started this one. I'm going here, so we'll just stick it over there. This is for my front door. Okay, so we have a fake base, and then I just use the real live greenery and tuck it in and weave it in. Um, that way I can add a lot of texture. You're going to have allergies with me. <laughs> um, and what I like about this is I don't have to spend all that time wiring and all that greenery. And if some of it starts to fade quicker than others, because my stuff usually stays up until almost Valentine's Day, because it's just boring out there, you know. Um, you can take some of the things that start to get brown or whatever out this way, and you still have something that looks decent from the road or from the street. So I just gave that a start. Now I would use a lot of real greenery in here, but you can see how nicely that comes together. Still looks real, 
you can add a lot of variety of, of real greens that way. And that's my front door, which is red, so that works really good for that. This one, I'm going to wire this copper star, which hangs on the garden shed wall. Um, I'm just going to wire that to the center, and then we're going to put in our coppery bow now, and I'm probably going to mount that to the top. You know, decorating your 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 outside of your house. Um, if you get into a lot of lights and things, that's where it gets into work. But really using greenery and doing something that makes it really pop for the season and for the winter, which can get long <coughs> and drab, is not one bit hard. And if you don't have any evergreens or things in your own yard planted, chances are you have some friends that do. Um, and they would be happy to share. And one of the things about pruning um, for, the, uh, for the greenery is to not just take a whole branch. You would prune your greenery like you would if you were pruning it in the spring. Most of the time evergreens get pruned in the spring. And um, a spruce, a spruce, uh, yeah, two things in two new places. A spruce branch on a spruce tree, Black Hill or Colorado Blue, if you want to keep it getting thick, you prune this candle part off. So I'm going to want more than the candle. But again, if you go back to a point on that branch that you know when it grows again new in the spring, it's going to grow two new um, growths. That's the way to prune your evergreens or your neighbor's evergreens. If you ask them, don't go over there. <laughs> don't ask them. Um, and still not do any harm to your to your growing your growing tree. And it's okay to harvest evergreens at this time of year. Now, some of you may have luxury of having friends that are farmers, and farmers are very notorious for planting shelter belts. <laughs> they have shelter belts planted out in the country. And many times those never get a pruning. And so this would be something, some arrangements you could make with your friend that's the farmer that has a shelter belt and stock it to prune a different series of trees every year. So they keep growing nice and thick for them. But that's just a good um, method of gathering your greens and not doing any damage to the growing tree. Um, if you only have a specimen tree in your yard and it's small yet, chances are you're not going to want to do too much harvesting off of that. But um, again, lots and lots of variety in the kinds of greens we can use. I like to use Arborvita indoors and I like to use the pine indoors for that reason that I shared with you before is I find these much easier to wash off than the spruce, and the spruce, um, lots of little critters get in all those, those little, um, little areas. But because of the copper on here, I'm thinking I'm going to like to accent this one. It has kind of a pine base already, so I'm going to accent this one <coughs> with the arborvita. <coughs> Now, this is time consuming. That's why I started to do the one so that you can just see the, the method, methodology. Um, these last through nice blizzard winds and everything. There, you know, there, there's a lot of attachment areas. If you, if you have a big branch that you wanted to attach like this, you can even use the actual base as part of the wire. They bend. They are wired. That's what's really nice about it. Now this one to me has a little bit fakier green color than the other one I showed you. But by the time you start nestling in, um, 
your natural materials, voila, that starts to kind of disappear. And I'm drawing in very simply something I already took out of the garden that just seemed multi-purpose. I'm bringing it into use for the winter. And I'm tying it in with this arrangement over here, which we're going to do over now. So take your long last look at the Thanksgiving one, which I'm going to have to do over. <laughs> and I'm just going to take the whole thing out. Isn't this sad? <laughs> I have to watch for my gazing ball first. Now, this is another way you can reuse garden accessories. I have a copper gazing ball that's on my glass top coffee table, and I just tuck this into this. This is going to be reused. This is going to be used in the Christmas one, too. When you're doing an arrangement, if you don't like the way the bottom looks because it's all twiggy, and there's holes and there's maybe some of your bags showing that you've used to prop things up. Don't be afraid to use mosses. Mosses are fantastic to fill out that bottom area. There's the bag. That was to cushion the gazing ball. Um, oh, one word I should tell you about. You notice that I had oak leaves in there? This is, through all my research, folks, the best branches to harvest as a whole branch. Um, they, the leaves are retained much better on an oak tree than they are on lots of other trees. Um, they don't let go. These I harvested probably almost a month ago. And I did keep them outside um, in my garden shed so they, whatever humidity there was, they kept on getting that. But um, they stayed really nice. They stayed attached to the branches really nice. This one can be moved back to Jessica. So now we're going to start with the copper entrance planter. And this time I'm going to use the gazing ball as the center. And I'm going to use these really great drippy to make almost like a nest for the big copper gazing ball. This is a Norway um, spruce. I think Norway spruce is what they call it. The Norwegian plant. <laughs> and I like them in window boxes and I love them in this. Now, I'm, I'm going to use this as my base, but I'm going to also tuck in some other colors that will draw whatever I'm putting on them. Now, the wreath is not going to hang on my door. The wreath is going to hang off. The lantern is right above this. So, again, on the lantern, I'm going to put some of that drippy um, evergreen and a copper bowl and then we're going to, I might have to build this up a little more. Let's skip. We want to get some other color in here anyway. Arbivita is, you know, that wonderful accent. It's got the flat texture, still with an openness and an airiness to it, um, and that kind of chartreuse green color. I like that as an accent. Randy, is your is the pot empty, or, or are you sticking it into something? The pot is empty. I have a plastic bag in there, and just this is okay. what's cool about this. This pot comes as an insert. I use, use the pot just to pot my, whatever my summer arrangement is, too. And the only thing I have different in this now is that I put um, a bag in the bottom that kind of cushions. But I'm going to lace, I'm just going to take some of these sticks that I have moisture in it and then freezing and thawing. And so this is completely empty. It just has a plastic liner inside just so that the um, 
Green Ray didn't sink down too low in it. And I probably, um, with a little more time, might even add a little more greenery to this, but it's a pretty good start. And um, I'm bringing in the birch again. I'm bringing in, this is that silver, what is that one called? Master Gardeners. It's that trailing accent plant we all put, a lot of us put in our containers. I can't think of what it is right now. Looks like a little ginkgo leaf almost. Um, is it is it licorice? I don't think it is. Yes, that's what it is. Anyway, I just dumped these pots and they had lavender and this in them. They were gorgeous. But I had to I had to have a pot for my Christmas decoration. And I've never done that one before, so this is the research piece. But I got to thinking I wanted to reuse my garden bird, which is a heavy metal bird. And this accents the copper lanterns I have at my front door, and then I have a red front door. So my wreath that went around before with the red ribbon and the raspberries on it. I'll just bring that over, Jessica, we'll show that with this. Um, another thing I could add to this is this eucalyptus. Again, another reuse. Just a different texture. Brings out that blue, kind of helps accent the blue in the bird. Yeah, so I've got the red picking up on the red door, and that's why I'm using a red bow and this raspberry garland. It's just, you know, this is going to be fine outside. It's actually the little glass beads on wires. And I don't even remember where I got it, but it's, I've never used that one on the wreath before. Hey. So I thought, you know, this would be nice and simple. You can add pine cones if you want to. I don't know that I want to. I think I like it just real simple the way it is. Um, the other thing that works really, really nicely in this, black, I should put some in. Is this dried artemisia because that gives it that kind of frosty look. And again, I think that's going to help tie in the mask. Um, it kind of accents the birch, makes that pop. And I'm reusing something my garden. Now if I wanted to, I could add some little sprigs of that up at the top by the bowl, you know, just to, to draw in that silver on the wreath too. I kind of like this, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like this little mess thing, and that one, I don't know what it's going to look like in a couple weeks, but. Turn the flip so you see it over here. You know, this I caught like two days ago when it hasn't been in water. I just swirled it and put it in this can. Um, it's obviously going to shrink up more, but I think actually in the nest, in, in amongst the, um, it probably will stay that silver color at least. And it looks like a little nest, so. Um, window box. We're going to make the window box complementary <coughs> to Let's just take this over here. We're going to make the window box complementary to the, these are my front windows. So um, this might be a little tall because these are right off my front windows looking into the street. So I don't know that I'm going to want it this tall. Looks good on a table. But as I start thinking of looking out my window and not having any light, it's a north window besides not having any light, there'll be two of these together. I think I'm going to take this high one out. And I think I'm going to concentrate more on keeping the height no higher than that. Now if you cut off a piece like that and it's something like a window box, you can reuse that piece. That doesn't have to be garbage for you. This little one, I think is fine. So maybe 
see if I have another little one. So that I have, this here, this little one is fine too. You gotta have three. <laughs> boxes. I used autumn fern, which is a, a, a fern that's quite hardy and it has kind of a bronzy frond with, along with the green and I planted those on each corner and then I just had the birch twigs and lots and lots of um, bittersweet and these. Do not forget about your lovely burning bush branches. Not only do they have that cute little red Christmas bell on them, I have that here too, but the, the bark is extraordinary. It has that kind of square, corky look. I'll pass this around. Um, and it has a little bit of a green haze to it. So that's what I used along with bittersweet in my, um, and then the ferns in my, in my fall box. Now I'm just going to change them out. And I want to make this complimentary, like I said, to my front door. I want to keep it low enough that I can still see out my window. And I just want to add texture and difference in greenery. I need some more of this filler stuff. And you know, when, when you start to get some of these thicker ones in there, they help, I'm just using the ants too, because they're helping hold the shape so that I have now, the different uh, junipers are so interesting in themselves. They have that lovely little gold tip to them. Some of them have the blue berries on them. We'll add that for filler. If I wanted to, I could bring in a delicate. Um, red twig dogwood. Um, I don't know if you noticed when you came in, you probably did because you're all visual people. Bernie did a wonderful job on some um, entrance urns out at the front that had some yellow twig dogwood and some dried hydrangeas in them. And there was, Bernie, are you here? What was the seed head? It's a pampas grass. It's not burning for here, but it's a tropical. Okay. So that was not familiar to me, and I just thought that was an interesting, kind of like the nine bark seed. I mean, that, that I think would make it interesting. But yeah, you can add a little bit of that red touch to pick up on the door. See how easy this really is? I'm just throwing things in on it. And I'm going with a little bit of the lighter, airier, um, not a heavy touch on that on my foot. <coughs> Some red in there. Are we running on the time? Okay. That gets to the indoor thing. Different 
examples set up. We talked a little bit about the Thanksgiving ones. Um, the low, keeping it low and simple. Um, these were fun. These were little cordial cups. I made, did little mini, almost like little mini urns. It's d done with florist foam, just in a little rectangle that you soak, and that's inside the cup. Um, I made three different varieties, and the reason I did that for this one is, even though this is airy, maybe by the time you sit down for your dinner, people don't want to talk through the airy branches. Just pull that off, and you put your little mini woods around there instead, and you still have a very fun um, centerpiece to your table. These were about as easy as, this is boxwood, just cut little tiny twigs of the red, you know, to make it look like a little miniature urn. This was juniper. These are little birch, um, little birch catkins at the end of the, and here we have a Colorado blue with some little snippets of the red berries off of the burning bush, just to make it look like it has little red balls in it. Okay, let's try these in there. Let's just see what this looks like. I think it might be just the right thing. See how something a little lighter, this kind of makes things pop. Nine bark. Nine bark. I've never done that one before. So, um, what else could I, oh, okay. This is an example over here of using your everyday dishes. These are my everyday dishes. A friend of mine has the real deal, Royal Copenhagen. This is just the Johnson Brothers Denmark version. This is what we've used for every day forever. And how you can make your everyday place sitting very festive for the holidays as well. Um, I've got some birch branches here. Here's those little catkins I was talking about. Um, these little crystal ornaments are like a raindrop or an ice crystal. I use these on all my branch things. Um, I have paper whites growing in here. Now if I take this out, this is just an example of how much difference, just a little spring, now some of you can't see this at all, can you? Sorry. By adding just a small bit of greenery sometimes, just what a fresh breath it's coming, guys. We aren't going to have any green pretty soon. So by the time Christmas or the holidays that you celebrate arrive, a little sprig of green inside is a welcome relief. I like the paper whites. I didn't put them in the ground or the water quite soon enough. But you put them in with a teaspoon of some clear alcohol, vodka, rum, it doesn't matter, with your water. And that helps them from getting skunky, if you want to plant them just in water. They grow faster in water than they do in soil. So I start all my paper whites and keep them growing in water. I have pebbles in the bottom. Here's what the paper white looks like. Um, about three more daisies would have been perfect, because they would have had the, the straight little um, green shoot, which kind of reminds me of new life, and we're getting ready for new life. Advent is kind of new life, and pretty soon it'll be a new year, and uh, this is just my everyday dinner plates, uh, depending on the linen that you use. And here's a classic example of, do you want to have it be classic with a dark blue candle, or do you want to glitz it up and have a shiny silver candle? It's a different look. I kind of, because it's my everyday dish, just go with the classic blue. But if you want it to be very holiday, you can have it be um, silver. Um, this is another example of a very simple, actual nature arrangement. But I'm using this <coughs> ribbon that I found as actual table runners. I crisscross them on the table, so instead of using placemats, I just have these running across the table. It says Merry Christmas. Um, lots of candlelight. And a very, very simple centerpiece. One of those hurricane um, globes with a sprig of the pine cranberries 
and um, you can do the same thing with if you don't have the raised container, you just have to be more careful of what you put in the bottom with your candle so it doesn't start on fire. I probably would leave the evergreen out and just have the cranberries in there. I collect these little glass balls wherever I can find them. They're usually sold as paperweights. I think it's probably the Norwegian in me, the Scandinavian, reflect light in the winter, reflect light. Keep light going and reflect as much of it as you can. And you can see how that grabs your, your ambient light as well as your overhead light is reflected in all the greenery and everything gets reflected in there. This is a very simple one you can use for New Year's, just a candle, a couple of glass balls and some <coughs> snow in a, in a tray. Here's my buffet table. Here's where you can really have fun. Usually you have a wall behind it or something behind it and you can just build and build and have lots of fun with this. When they show these centerpieces on your dining room table at Pottery Barn and those other places, you're going to have trouble talking to your friends over and family over the table, but they're beautiful. But have a buffet instead and then do, do a buffet because they are fun to do. Um, Showing you don't have to use dinnerware, you can use paper plates and paper napkins. Keep it simple. I think that's it, guys. I did it. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. If you are in a hurry, you can certainly get up and walk around the table to look at things. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. I'll be the in. Simple things in mind. Don't bring spiders. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think, yes, they were my mother in law. They each got three. So, that's not a problem. Nobody ever used.